Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. A while ago, we talked about Moses' kit, and as a Lightning Hunt character with a 4-star rarity, of course Moe's has pros and cons in his kit. To be honest, there are a few things about his kit that most players are concerned about, such as the skill mechanic and the number of follow-up attack stacks he has. But it looks like that Hoyaverse had heard the complaints of the fans made some changes to Moe's kit. What changes did Hoyoverse give to Moe's? Did Hoyoverse make him stronger or weaker? Well, in this video, we'll try to discuss about the updates of the Moe's kit. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Do you have a character or weapon in the game that you really want but you don't have enough stellar jades? Here is a smarter way to recharge your favorite games like Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. Look no further than Loot Bar. Loot Bar is the most reliable top-up platform, saving 20% for all orders compared with the official channel, and an extra 5% off for your first purchase. It's 100% safe as you will only be using your UID. We will buy a pack for 3,000 stellar jades for $42, which otherwise would have cost $50. Is having $7.5. We received the crystals which purchased in less than 3 minutes. All recharge will be done through the official channel with Mihoyo, which allows you to enjoy all top up offers. Ready to level up your gaming experience? Check the link in the description to get the amazing discount. We've been hearing a lot on Reddit about Moses' new kit, and it looks like almost all of his abilities have undergone changes and adjustments. And one of the most significant changes, in my opinion, is his follow up attack mechanic. In the previous version, Moe's had to collect 7 stack points to trigger the follow-up attack after using his fleet-winged raid skill. Previously, this skill would mark one enemy target as prey and deal lightning damage equal to 75% of Moe's attack. The damage percentage has been changed to 150% of Moe's total attack. I'm not sure if this 150% is the percentage for Moe's skill damage at level 1 or its maximum level, but in any case, this upgrade is already quite a big change. One other thing that's different about Moses' latest skill is that, instead of having to collect 7 stack points to trigger a follow-up attack, he now gets 9 follow-up attack stack points after he launches his skill and enters the departed state. This is also affected by the changes in his talents. In the previous version of Moses' talent, Cascading Featherblade, Mose will enter the departed state when there is a prey on the battlefield. Once your teammates have attacked prey, Mose will gain one charge for a follow-up attack. When the charge points reach 7, Moe's will use them all and launch his follow-up attack on Prey, causing lightning damage equivalent to 100%, max level 250% of his attack. The Prey status will be removed from the enemy. The talent mechanic has been changed. Now, Moe's will get 9 follow-up attack stack points after using the skill and entering the departed state. The points are reduced one by one every time an ally attacks Prey. For every 3 points that are reduced, Moe's will launch a follow-up attack on Prey, which causes lightning damage equal to 160% of Moe's attack. And I think this is a big change to Moe's kit. Let's compare it to his old talent, where Moe's could only launch one follow-up attack for every 7 stack points he had. In the latest description, Moe's has 9 stack points and for every 3 points reduced, Moe's can launch a follow-up attack to Prey. This means Moe's can use up to 3 times of his follow-up attack. Without a doubt, this makes Moe's a more effective follow-up attack-giving unit in the team than the previous version. On top of that, this new talent means Moe's can also reduce the potential for greater damage loss to the team as long as he can attack the enemy. Apart from the skills and abilities, Moe's ultimate Dash In, Gash Out also underwent some pretty interesting changes. The big change here is what happens after Moe's does the ultimate. In the old version, after Moe's uses his ultimate, He'll get a 50% damage increase for his next attack for two turns. In the newest version, instead of increasing his damage by 50% for two turns, Moe's will launch a follow-up attack. If the target is defeated before Moe's follow-up attack is used, Moe's will activate it on one of the other enemies at random. As you may recall, this ability to activate a follow-up attack after using the ultimate was previously exclusive to Moe's sixth Eidolon. The Hoyoverse team made the decision to include the 6th Eidolon buff in Moe's ultimate skill, which I think this is a great upgrade because it allows Moe's to deal two types of damage even without an Eidolon, the damage from the ultimate and the follow-up attack triggered on the prey. And if we combine it with the follow-up attack triggered from its stack points, doesn't this make Moe's a very effective unit in using follow-up attacks? 
What are your thoughts on this, guys? In addition, there are some abilities that have undergone slight adjustment in the kit, like Moses' baited wings technique. In the old kit, this technique would put Moe's in stealth status for 20 seconds, meaning that while he's in stealth, enemies can't detect him. When Moe's enters combat, he gains a 50% forward advance and increases the DMG caused by him by 30% for one turn. The technique was changed by removing the advance forward effect that was given before. Even though we don't get acceleration for Moe's turn, this is still an acceptable changes. After all, we can still get this advance forward buff from Moses' second ascension traces, called Daggerhold. In the latest version of this traces, Moses will get 30% advance forward after departed state is gone, and then at the beginning of each wave, Moses will get an additional 30% advance forward again. This is a bit different from the old traces description, where Moses could get up to 90% additional advance forward if departed state was lost as long as Moe's had four or more follow-up attack stack points. While the percentage of this advance forward has decreased, at least we can get it without having to make Moe's in a certain condition where he must have at least four points of stack follow-up attack, which is probably difficult for us to achieve given the changes to Moe's follow-up attack mechanic. So, in my view, this trace adjustment is a positive change because it means we can still get the maximum advance forward boost even if we lose the departed state when we have less than four stack points. Unlike Moses' first and second traces, his third trace, Vengewise underwent a complete change. In the old version, this trace provided a crit DMG boost for ally attacks given to Prey by 20%. And in the latest version, the description for this trace has been changed to when Moe's performs an ultimate, it will be considered a follow-up attack, and the damage of the follow-up attack will be increased by 25% for attacks on enemies with prey status. As you may recall, this description was previously used for E1 Moe's. As you may have noticed, Moe's two best Eidolons have been transformed into his basic abilities. Could this be Hoyoverse's way of apologizing to fans for Moe's old kit? I'm not sure what the reason is, but regardless, let's be grateful and hope this kit doesn't change again. Given that two of Moses' Eidolons have already changed into his basic abilities, of course, all of Moses' Eidolons have undergone a lot of changes. Starting with the first Eidolon, Oathkeeper, which we discussed earlier, this Eidolon buff has been given to Moes for her third ascension. So, what effect did Hoyoverse give to this first Eidolon then? The new effect for his E1 is that he regains 20 energy points for every time Moe's enters battle and an additional 2 points of energy every time the additional damage from his talent is triggered, which previously, this buff was a buff from Moe's second Eidolon. A brief explanation of this first Eidolon is, Moe's will receive 20 energy when the battle starts and when he's in the departed state, for every ally's attack, it will replenish Moe's energy. Just to give you a heads up, the latest version of Moses' second Eidolon, Wrathbearer, will provide a Krite DMG boost for ally attacks given to Prey of 40%, which is actually the same buff that Moses' third Ascension Traces had in the previous version. There's only a slight change in the percentage of the boost to critical damage, which was previously only 20% and is now 40%. And for Moses E4, Heath Prowler has also changed. It used to give another additional crit damage effect from Vengewise's traces at 20%. Now, it increases Moses' attack damage by 30% after he does his ultimate, and this effect can last for two turns. Lastly, Faithbinder, Moses E6, which in the previous version, this Eidolon can cause the activation of follow-up attack immediately after Moses uses her ultimate. And because the buff has been combined with her ultimate, this Eidolon is given a new effect, which is an increase in the damage multiplier of the follow-up attack by 25%. It's true that Moe's has undergone some big changes to his kit, but if we take a closer look at his old and new kits, we'll see that most of the changes he has are just changes in the position of his abilities. For example, the buff that used to Moses Eidolon is now a buff for his skills or traces. On the other hand, Moses Traces buff is transformed into a buff for his Eidolon. But the most important change in his upgraded kit is the one that affects his follow-up attack mechanic, which is all about his talent. Previously, Moses had to collect 7 points to trigger his follow-up attack. Now he only needs to use 3 points, which means he can perform up to 3 follow-up attacks with just one activation of his skill. 
This is a big change from his old kit, which could only launch one follow-up attack. And given this significant change to the follow-up attack mechanic, I have no hesitation to tell the world that Moe's is the best alternative four-star character we can use in a follow-up attack team if they don't have the five-star character Topaz. Okay guys, I think that's it for this video. Don't forget to check out my other videos because they are just as cool. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video.